So, in my previous lecture, I had mentioned that what is the importance of cell culture and particularly in the microfluidic system. Then I had discussed that how that microfluidic channels or oils could be constructed using uh, that PDMS based elastomeric matrix. Now, we are discussing that how cell culture can be done in that microfluidic platform with different modalities and with some precautions. Then we are comparing how that fluidic cell culture differs from macro scale and what are the challenges in microfluidic cell culture. So, in the microfluidic cell culture we have to look for that how to sell the seeds, then how to manage that physiochemical properties inside the microfluidic channel when cells are growing. Then also you have to know that effective culture time means the time necessary for that exchange in the media when you are doing that static cell culture and critical perfusion rate you have to know that medium flow rate when you are doing dynamic cell culture. And before going to the cell culture itself, we have to have some precautions about that bubble formation and that maintaining that humidity of that microfluidic chamber. That bubbles are very much detrimental to cells because cells adhere to the bubble surface and while bubble bursts, that cell get died or it is affected. So, you have to manage that anyway bubble should not be formed during the inlet or in the culture channel. So, if that bubble is not means avoidable, then we have to remove the bubble by active process or you should try by which that bubble should not enter in the culture area particularly. And sometimes that bubbles clogs that media entry and cell get died with the deficient of media. Then evaporation is another important factor we have to look after because PDMS uh, is very much permeable to all the gases. If proper humidity is not maintained, then uh, inside the microfluidic channel that media gets concentrated due to evaporation, then osmolality increase. So, therefore, you have to maintain that proper humidity inside that channel or in the surrounding of the microfluidic vessel. So, now we are coming to the how to seed the cell in different ways. So, you can seed the cell number one way is, is gravity driven pores means here that you have a inlet port and outlet port and that inlet port you keep the reservoir where that cell suspension is there particularly here and flow is driven by that pressure difference between the inlet port and outlet port that is delta H. Problem is here is that when that cells are we are keeping the cells in that inlet port cells are settling and due to the settling that local concentration of cell is much higher than the bulk concentration. So, that concentrated cell will consume that sugar and other growth factor very quickly and liberate that waste product and that waste product will diffuse through the channel and it may hamper that main cell culture area. So, that is the drawback of gravity driven flow, but it is used to achieve more uniform seeding throughout the channel. Another way to seed that cell by passive pumping, here you can apply the discrete amount of or how much that cell you need, you can drop it in the one port, because here that pressure difference between inlet and outlet is governed by that channel that is inlet diameter and outlet diameter. Outlet diameter is higher than inlet diameter. So, pressure will be higher at that inlet than that outlet. So, if you precisely drop on your cell suspension, then drop will enter inside the microfluidic channel by that pressure difference. And that is uniformly you can set the cell and precisely you can do that. And if you can enhance that cell setting, 
you can put a, a, a tissue paper here, it can be succinct or it can by capillary action some fl your fluid will be go in the your uh, tissue paper then it will be more it will be uh, flow enhanced. Now, another way of seeding you can apply both gravity driven and suction based cell seeding. Here principle is that same principle, here we are dropping that your cell suspension, then you tilt that fluidic vessel around say 30 degree, then you put a tissue paper at the outlet by which that media will be suctioned through the tissue paper capillary action. In that way, you can also precisely seed the cells. Another way of seeding that microfluidic vessel is by your uh, pump. Here we are using syringe pump based method and most of the labs use this syringe pump method for cell seeding. Here principle is that you are forcing that cell, uh, uh, cell suspension through the fluidic channel in that uh, area of culture and then excess media will be going out. So, before going to this system, you have to sterilize that microfluidic setup in a petri dish then by autoclaving, then you keep it in that laminar hood. So, we are putting that in a in the autoclave channel is placed in the laminar hood and flushed with 3 or 2 times with phosphate over saline. Then humidified because we know that humidification is very much essential to maintain that humidity around that fluidic channel and the surrounding. So, we are soaking that tissue paper with around say uh, 200 microliter of uh, distilled water by which that surrounding, uh, uh, surrounding tissue paper is wet. Then we are starting that cell seeding. In the cell seeding, initially we have to pass that phosphate buffer saline through that syringe pump by which that there will be no bubble will be entrapped inside that fluidic channel and, and you should be careful about that. After that, you connect that syringe pump where that your cell suspension is kept with the tubing, then tube is carefully connected with that your entry or inlet port and then you on that switch on that your pump syringe pump then fluid will flow it takes around say 20 microliter per minute we are flowing around say 1 to 2 minute according to the desire uh, whatever you want then you look for that when that that channel will be filled up by seeing that red color of the uh, media and after that you can switch off that your syringe pump. Then we have to do the dismantling of that tubing from that inlet. Carefully you have to do there should not be no air bubble trapped. Then you uh, upper lid of the petri dish you close it. Then you are transferring it in your carbon dioxide incubator for the growth around 30 17 centigrade maintaining that temperature humidity and that proper buffering action by 5 percent CO2. So, this is done by your students. Then after you can check the cells say this is the after 48 hours of growth of the cell HeLa cell we are growing then after 48 hours that cells are growing more or less it is a confluent. So, in that 48 hours you have to change that media and what, why you want to change the media that we are coming. So, how to maintain the cell culture? So, first is cell density monitoring, then nutrient delivery. So, cell density monitoring you can do by different ways. Generally, uh, uh, people are doing connecting with the optical transducer in that system, then optical density will be taken, then optical density is directly proportional to the cell density. So, in that way you can determine the how much cells is growing with respect of time. Then nutrient delivery because that in microfluidic channel height is less and per cell 
that amount of culture media is much much less than that of a macro cells, macro cell culture. So, you have to change the media at certain interval when you are doing the static culture. But if you want to do long term culture or you want to do continuous culture, then you have to perfuse the system by flowing the media with a certain flow rate uh, that is called the perfusion system. But perfusion system is always not good for the cell culture because cells, cell cell contact and cell will liberate some autocrine factors. So, that is very much necessary or local constants of autocrine factors is very much necessary for cellular growth. If you perfuse continuously, this autocrine growth factors will be diluted or it will be going out. Instead of perfusion uh, continuously, we can make it in a circular way what is happening in our body that a recirculatory, recirculatory system using peristaltic pump could be applied. This is a peristaltic pump. So, you can use that peristaltic or recirculate that media by which that autocrine growth factor should not be lost with a certain period of time. Other factors you have to consider like say oxygen delivery. In general PDMS layer are permeable to oxygen, it is a diffusion coefficient around 3.5 into 10 to the power minus 5 centimeter square per second. And it is assumed that sufficient oxygen concentration is sufficient in PDMS microfluidics system. And generally we are measuring the oxygen concentration in a fluidic channel by using that uh, fluorescent dye, it is 2 to prime bipyridyl dichloruthenium hydrate. and cell concentration and dilution and that is done in macro scale system by centrifugation then different dilution using centrifuge and that append of tubes. So, but how will we doing in uh, uh, micro scale system? So, that can be done that technologies are developed using physical size based impediments, electric charge, inertial focusing etcetera. These are used for cell concentration in a fluidic chip itself. In general, it is not much used, but if you want to automate everything in one place that you, it can be done. Then coming is cell passaging is a very important uh, means uh, process. So, in the cell passaging in the macro scale, we are doing trypsinize that your culture vessel with the required time with the required concentration of trypsin. Then we are taking that cell suspension and dilute it accordingly then you replate it either 1 is to 2, 1 is to 5, 1 is to 10 ratio in that next vessel that is called the passaging. So, how it can be done in uh, fluidic situation? So, that can be done easily. So, this is that your cell suspension initially it is seeded or cell loaded then let it allow to grow say whatever time 48 hours or 72 hours. Then you take the measurement whatever you want optical based measurement cell based assay you can do. Then you flush that this chamber with a desired trypsin concentration desired time by which that you will be getting that required dilution either 1 is to 4, 1 is to 10, 1 is to 12 whatever you want. Then again you flush with media then some cells according to your uh, likeness will be staying in the your fluidic chamber then allow the cell to grow this is first passaging then in that you can repeat whatever you want 3, 4, 5 passage you can do this is cell passaging generally what you are doing in the macro scale same system we can replicate in micro scale also. So, now the problem is that in a static culture that oxygen concentration but PDMS layer though it is permissible to oxygen, but in certain situation when that we are bonding that PDMS layer with the glass surface and when there are lot of hydrophobic molecules adhere to the PDMS surface, then that oxygen permeability decreases around 1000 times. So, in our lab we have developed some system static culture system by which we can prolong that culture period without changing the media using that air liquid interface. So, here principle is that we are flushing that fluidic channel with a medium of hexadecan and octadecyl trichloroxylene for two, 2 or 3 times. Then you dry it, then if we pass 
a hydrophilic solution like say here rhodamine, then a virtual channel will be formed in where that in one channel air will be means vacant in that channel air can flow and other channel where that hydrophilic solution is comes. This is a virtual wall basically formed due to that self assembly of that OTS. This is not very much stable depending upon that your in which rate you are flowing that uh, hydrophilic solution. So, with this principle we have made this channel then we are culturing different types of cells like say L929, 33, MG63 and we are in the static system we are looking for how much we can increase that culture period or incubation time. So, this picture showed that this is that is your uh, virtual wall in that part air will air is there and this part is liquid where cells are seeded and we are using around 10 to the power 5 cells per ml and flow rate will be less than 1 microliter by which that virtual wall will should not destroy basically. After 72 hours again we are uh, counting the cells then how much cells are growing then we are determining the n by n 0 ratio of different cells. So, what you are seeing in that curve that 33 cells where that number of cells is much higher than its your seeding cell density and it follows that your uh, L929 then it is Mg63 means that uptake rate of media and oxygen uptake rate that depends upon cell to cell. So, that is demonstrated here and using that air liquid interface we can prolong that cell culture time in a static condition. So, as I discussed earlier the effective culture time. So, effective culture time this is the time interval between the medium change by which in a static condition by which that cells will not deprived of the essential nutrients. So, generally that microfluidic channel culture volume to cell number ratio is 4 to 6 times less than that of macro scale. So, that is why that your in microfluidic cell culture that media deficiency will be there. So, we have to change the media with a particular interval of time. So, that time is called that effective culture time. Here height is considered to be the characteristics length because in the micro channel length and width are considerably larger than the height and age becomes the limiting dimension of the diffusion. So, for that you have to consider that initial concentration of the particular substrate say C 0, substrate uptake rate by the cells like say K m, diffusivity of the substrate is D, cell density sigma, the culture area A, medium volume B. So, medium height will be A is equal to V by A. So, we are using the Damkohler number it is a dimensionless parameter that measures the ratio between reaction time and diffusion time scale. Say here that Damkohler number is equal to H square D divided by C 0 H by K m sigma that numerator indicates the diffusion time scale whereas that denominator represents that reaction time scale. For micro scale cell culture H is typically 5 to 10 times smaller than the macro cell culture. So, implying that Damkohler number is up to an less order of magnitude lower than the micro channel. Since tau r that is ratio is equivalent to E C T that is effective culture time the diffusion dominant system the tau r is linearly proportional to H. So, we can model it like say effective culture time is proportional to H means height of that media inside that fluidic channel. So, in general when you are doing macro, cell, macro scale culture in a say 8, 80 centimeter petri dish area we are giving 10 ml of the media and we are changing the media 48 hours. That means, your media height is around 1.2 millimeter. As you already we have know that effective culture time is proportional to H taking this consideration we can calculate that H in microfluidic cell culture when H is 200 micrometer then effective culture time tau r will be around 
uh, reduced by a factor of 6, which suggests that media should be replenished by 8 hours. So, this data what is generated by general modeling, it is not true for all the cells, because each cell behaves differently and cell growth is different in macro scale and in micro scale. So, this is a general idea for that to know that effective culture time. If you know that at what time in macro scale for particular cell that media has to be replenished, then you can easily calculate that tower in case of same cell in micro scale. Then we are coming that critical perfusion rate when you, we want to culture in a dynamic situation in the same way like similar to Damkola number we can derive it from the ratio of convection time and reaction time. So, kappa is L by U m where L is the length of the channel and U m is the flow velocity by C 0 h by K m sigma. So, we define the critical perfusion rate as the velocity at which subset concentration just reaches 0 at the outlet means this is inlet and outlet when that media is coming at that distance outlet all the media the nutrients are taken up by that cells means exhausted. So, at least you should you should replenish the media at that time interval or in that rate basically that is why that critical perfusion rate coincide when kappa is 1. So, when kappa is greater than 1 convective time scale dominates over the reaction time scale. If kappa is less than 1 reaction time scale dominates over convective time scale. Therefore, your critical perfusion rate can be calculated when kappa equal to 1 or CPR equal to L by tau r. So, means if you once you know the tau r, if you know the length of the channel, you can have an idea that it which rate your media should be given for a dynamic cell culture. It in that way you can run that cell culture maybe 3 to 4 days, 5 days, 6 days, depending upon the situation. Now, we are coming that all the adhering cells are not shear resistance. Some cells are they need shear for the growth, but not that much shear what the other cell needs like say cells in that renal tubular epithelial cells. So, in that case you can reduce the shear by using that elegant designing. So, main fluid flow is through that channel, then cells are growing in the side channel. So, in this design all the data are given it here in that design that shear force inside that means where the cells are growing it is around 3.8 to 0.75 percent less than that of the main flow rate or main channel where that flow rate is given 1 ml per hour. So, in that situation that you can reduce the shear there are a lot of other ways also shear can be reduced by using a porous membrane and etcetera. So, to study the micro environment stimuli because that microfluidic system we can integrate lot of chemical stimuli, physical stimuli together. So, chemical stimuli has a lot of role particularly utilizing the laminar flow and microfluidic mixture a gradient of biological molecules could be generated like the growth factors other can be generated. And it is very useful for the screening of the chemotactic ability particular growth factor and selected cell population that can be done by different design the microfluidic system. And physical stimuli are of different types topogra topographical stimuli, mechanical stimuli and electrical stimuli. In the topographical stimuli you can design that topography of the cell culture vessel and according to the topography of that your heart that cell will adhering in grow that cell behavior will change. There are a lot of reports that say cardiomyocytes if we make a group like structures that improve that myocyte alignment and result a greater expression of cardiac genes. At the same time that fibroblast growth is retarded in that design. So, it is good for that when you are growing cardiomyocyte and your fibroblast together because fibroblast generally growth rate is high. So, it is less in that type of topography. Mechanical stimuli particularly say endothelial cells osteoblast cells which needs which uh, means faces lot of shears 
that can be easily integrated, we can use that different types of fluid flow like pulsatile flow or uh, other type of flow in that situation. Then electrical stimuli. Electrical stimuli, uh, stimulus of cardiomyocyte was studied by using surface pattern electrodes and we know that electrical field stimulation repeatedly shown that cardiomyocyte growth and that expression of cardiac specific genes. Multilayer microfluidic system, this is a another system particularly when you are uh, uh, when you are using two types of cells co-culturing or say non adhering cells or say floating cells you want to culture and you want to perfuse it. Here we are giving example where that we are culturing non adhering cells with a perfusion for dynamic culture. Here that in that upper chamber PDMS layer based here that your uh, uh, cell suspension is there and the lower PDMS chamber is a zigzag way meander type of microfluidic channel where that media will pass and that in between in between there is a uh, membrane that is your uh, polycarbonate membrane or 5 micrometer porous uh, pore size and it is the membrane is sandwiched between these layers and you can flow the media and cell will grow here and this type of system has a lot of application in when we shall be discussing that uh, organ on chip. And cell culture systems are of different types right now we can tell that cell culture plot from single cell type, multiple cell type, 2D cell culture, 3D cell culture, then 2D co-culture and 3D co-culture. Now you are coming that how the 3D cell culture can be done. So, what are the why you want to do 3D cell culture in microfluidic system particularly chemical gradient can be created to mimic that complex and dynamic 3D network it is very cost effective and subset is for constructing microfluidic devices including silicon and biodegradable polymers are often permeable to oxygen microfluidics represent a multifaceted technology and which can handle several processes like sample mixing capture subsequent detection and ideal 3D cell culture should be promote growth of cell supplying needed nutrition. So, that is why we want to grow the cells in three dimensional system in microscale. So, this is there are a lot of examples we are citing only few examples here agarose based system could be used for the three dimensional cell culture this is silicon raised structure of silicon substrate in the top we are giving agarose low melting agarose embedded with cells. So, cells are embedded in the agarose that low melting uh, agarose and that we are putting on the silicon substrate and it will make a replica mold basically. Then we are lift up that agarose embedded with that cells and we are putting another agarose in the bottom layer by little bit melting by which it can be shielded that bottom layer and upper layer by melting that and then after cooling this is totally similar and this is the fluidic channel. You can pass the media through that fluidic channel to grow that. In that way mouse primary liver cell was grown it is around 3 to 4 days it was observed cells are growing uh, in that 3 dimensional cues or 3 dimensional situation. So, this is method is using a gels means we are we can use different types of gel extracellular matrix like collagen, fibrin, hyaluronic acid, matri gel etcetera. Another system is a 3D microfluidic cell culture without, without using gels. So, here is that this is the fluidic chamber and inside the fluidic chamber there are micro pillars are there and they are compartmentalized by 30 micrometer, 50 micrometer elliptical micro pillar array the gap of 20 micrometer. So, cells are uh, uh, seeded here with a high density around 10 to the power 5 per ml. Then you are perfusing the media by the two side channels by which cell will enter and that get the nutrition and that can be done by non compact way and compact way and cells are getting totally 3D structures and it is mimicking the liver, uh, liver cells how they are growing in lobule form. Another way to culture the 3D structure by dielectrophoretic way and this is also people are practicing 
in our lab also we practice that dielectric polarity going to cell culture three dimensional particularly pattern. Here that principle is that we have done that electrode patterning in the bottom layer of ITO coated glass sheets and the top layer is uh, means totally non coated or it is a top electrode in between PDMS layer is there and that channel is created in such a way that channel lines and will cover that whole that your electrode area. Then all these three things means bottom electrode, then PDMS layer, then top electrode are sandwiched between two PMM layer and sandwiched in such a way that no liquid will go out of the system using inlet and outlet system. The dimensions are here uh, given 5 to 6 meter away. So, this is the whole setup. This is that DEP chamber or DEP device connected with series pump, then we are connected with waveform generator, CCD camera, and then everything all data are noted. So, after 30 to 80 seconds, we pass the DEP that uh, you are uh, seeded with cells, then cells are patterned in that way, then we stop that DEP, then we are passing that PEG DA solution, pre polymerase solution, then you are radiated the UV radiation by that polymer will be means uh, low gel polymer will be formed and cells will be getting pattern. So, all these things how cells are patterned we are showing in this video. So, you see that cells are when you are on the DEP system or around so 30 to 80 seconds that cells are clustered in and around that that circular electrodes. And after the stopping DEP force, then we are giving PEG DA and we are growing around 3 to 4 days in CO2 incubator and we are assaying the leave and dead assay by using cerium ammonium olive dead that green means a viable cell, the red means cell dyed cells or cells are not viable. So, if you compare that key parameters between macroscopic, macroscopic and microfluidic cell culture, main points are that cell numbers few thousand cells you can culture it here, but here single to maybe thousand cell you can or you can give it higher density around 10 to the power 8 ml per ml using permission system. Volume density is very much important. Flux dishes as oil plates generally have 2 to 4 microliter media per 100 to thousands, but here it is a nanoliter level it means 5 times uh, higher than the macroscopic cell culture. Then another most important is nutrient consumption you have to change the media around 48 hours, but it is depending upon that cell to cell maybe 2 hours, 3 hours. Then proliferation and proliferation particularly in macroscale we are using polyacrylic made glass vessels that time is very much standardized 18 to 24 hours, but in that PDMS layer different types of things you have to reevaluate that what is the proliferation rate and pH gradients that also you can measure it. Then what are the challenges? Typical challenges to microfluidic cell culture, no standard culture protocol is there because you can use design your means geometry of the microfluidic channel according to the need there is no standard means throughout the world that one type of 96 oil will be used that is not the case. Then novel culture surface like PDMS it has a both positive points and some negative points are there. The next point is small culture volume challenging the subsequent analytical chemistry particularly say uh, genomics, proteomics, say uh, uh, then immunological staining and etcetera. Then complex experimental control of chip design because biologists always need which will be very much user friendly and maybe number of steps will be higher, but it should be user friendly. And then last point is that last but not least that connection between macro world to the micro world. So, as you are always mentioning that volume of the uh, microfluidic channel or oil is the micro liter volume, but outside volume when you are measuring when you are measuring the cell suspension or doing any reagent reversion that is in the around say 100 microliter or 500 microliter. So, all these things has to be addressed properly to solve that microfluidic based cell culture system times are coming. I think that microfluidic cell culture system will be practiced most of the modern cell culture lab in future. Thank you.